My name is Jack, and I'll be the backcountry guide today. We're going to be venturing past the area boundary. We're going to be exiting at the gate at the top of this gondola. We'll be riding that. The snow is looking very nice today. We'll have a good time. we we'll see some new stuff. We haven't had too much snow lately, but I hear it's pretty good on top. Hi, I'm Deb. Hi, Deb. I'm Brian. Hi. Nice to meet you. Are you from Utah? I'm from Rome. Italy? Yeah, Rome, New York. It's just east of Syracuse. I used to live here though, skied at Alta all the time. So now you're bordered, how did that happen? The hill outside of Rome is only 500 feet high, but if you strap on a board at 49 years old, it feels like Everest. Do you? Nah, I just ski. So what did you do while you were here in Utah? I worked at the Bingham Canyon copper mine across the valley. Are you still in mining? I spent 21 years in mining but I left to join Revere Copper Products. Mm, like Revere Ware? Well, no, we don't produce pots and pans anymore. Oh, okay. But we do fabricate copper for products that you use every day. Funny thing is, Revere still buys some of its copper from that mine. Sounds like you travel in the same circles. What do you do when you're not skiing? I work at the Wild Moose. The Wild Moose? What do you do? This is so beautiful. I hope it never changes. You sound like the consummate environmentalist. I am. You know, I've heard a lot about copper lately. I don't think it's so great for the environment, is it? Wasn't there something in San Francisco Bay about copper killing all the fish? Whoa. And mining, mining just turns these mountains into a wasteland. Just check out that awful hole across the valley. Look, Deb. In order to answer that, there's something you should see. This is the Bingham Canyon Mine, owned by Kennecott Utah Copper Corporation. This is my friend Bruce Farmer. Bruce is the president of Kennecott. Hello, Brian. Bruce, can you tell us about this incredible mine? Sure. It's two and a half miles wide and three quarters of a mile deep. It's the largest man-made excavation on Earth. Amazing. What does Kennecott do to protect the environment around the mine? The most important thing we do is improve the groundwater. We take groundwater, contaminate it with salts and metals, and pass it through a state-of-the-art nanofiltration plant. The purified water can be used as drinking water for our communities. That's great. I've also heard that you have a long-term commitment to land reclamation. We do. I can show you what we've done so far, but to do that, I need to introduce you to Paul, who manages our revegetation programs. Hi, Paul. These are beautiful animals. Yeah, it really uh, was that way all the time around this country. Uh, it's quite a devastated area, and uh, most uh, elk we ever had here three or four and to, to, to sustain them we just didn't have the habitat well how did you increase the herd well the most important thing is we put in a new smelter cleaned up the environment around the smelter and then in the mine and then that gave us opportunity to create uh, some habitat for the, just the wildlife sure looks like you've saved the elk here certainly have <laughs> too successful too after our revegetation program took hold, the herd expanded, so we had to start to trap them and ship them out in different places. Oh, you've been like seeding herds in other states? Yes, we've sent them to Nevada and Kentucky and Tennessee over the last few years. Oh, and seeding herds there? You bet. All the Kennecott rays. That's wonderful. Uh, I'm proud of that. Thanks, Bruce, for the informative tour. Sure, Brian. Kennecott's proud to produce the copper that society needs. Nothing much could happen without it. Think about it. No mines, no computers. No cars, no bikes, no hospitals. In fact, no snowboard. This plastic is a polymer derived from crude oil, which is drilled and mined. It kind of reminds me of that bumper sticker I saw in a mining operation where I grew up in Nevada. Okay, okay, what did it say? If it's not grown, it's mine. One last chance to defend yourself before we jump off. Fair enough. A 
about seven years ago at a meeting of the International Copper Association. A handful of us decided to find out the truth about copper's relationship to health and the environment. We decided to fund independent research at academic institutions. As it turns out, they found out some pretty incredible things. Did you know that an unborn child uses almost 10 times the amount of copper that a healthy adult does? For growth? For bone growth. The infant also needs copper for proper brain development and function. See at the bottom. Okay. Copper allows the transmission of electrochemical signals through the nervous system to our muscles. In fact, it may be impossible to move without it. This is a nice paint job. What kind of board is it? Thanks. It's an Omoro board. What's this? Alta's the only resort around here that doesn't allow snowboarders. Haven't you heard of the Moonlight Rider? You mean like Paul Revere? Deb, that was a midnight ride. He's talking about that moonlighting crazy who took the perfect ride down Bali, rode right into Alta. No one could catch him. He's already a legend. I don't suppose you'd know anything about that, would you? They can't prove a thing. That stuff about copper and human health is pretty interesting. It is. Copper is also fundamental for the development of both red and white blood cells, proper heart muscle movement, and the metabolism of cholesterol and glucose. Some of the research even suggests that copper promotes bone regrowth after injuries. Something tells me you've had a few. I believe I owe my good physical health to copper. What about your mental health? Well, that too. <laughs> copper is extremely important to normal brain function. Okay, okay. How come I keep hearing so much about the toxicity of copper then? It is true that when copper is submitted to certain chemical changes, it becomes toxic, but in its elemental form, like copper water pipe, it's not harmful. Since 1963, 5.3 million miles of copper have been installed to carry our drinking water. That's enough to wrap around the earth 200 times. So, you're telling me that the toxicity or safety of copper depends on its form? That's true. Copper takes a very long time to break down in the environment. That's why it's so difficult to absorb very much of it. Well, today's my last day. I have to catch a flight out tonight. Well, it was very interesting meeting you. Thanks. If you're ever in New York, stop by Revere. I'll give you a tour of the plant. Hmm, I do have a show in New York next month. Welcome to Rome. Can I get your bag? Sure. What's this? Wild Moose is a company? Well, what did you think it was? Why, nothing. I write children's books on the environment. You do? That's wow. why I was so excited about the environmental stuff. I think it's really important that kids know what's going on. Wow. Uh, well, I'm just glad that I could help. Wow, this is really beautiful. How old is it? It was built in 1911, but the company was founded in 1801. Come on. Okay. Hey, I'm really glad you came. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. Look, there's something I really want to show you. It's an original letter by Paul Revere. Oh my gosh. Boston, December 22nd, 1800. Dear sirs, I have engaged to build me a mill 
for rolling copper into sheep. Which for me is a great undertaking and will require every farthing which I can rake or scrap. For the houses, which I must necessarily build, I should want 15,000 of boards, about 25 casks of lime. If you Father, the British are coming! The British are coming! He falls for that every time. You mean this company was founded by Paul Revere? The same Paul Revere that took the midnight ride? Well, wait a minute. Was it a midnight ride or a moonlight ride? It was a midnight ride, Dev. You want to see what he created? Sure. cash shop where we take a lot of recycled copper, stir in a little virgin copper from the mines, and bake a cake. Here's where we hot roll the cake. Copper is recycled from demolished buildings, parts from abandoned automobiles, power lines, and old communications cables. I know I remember that rain running off of copper roofing is toxic. When acid rain hits a copper roof, a small amount of it is transformed into a compound that is toxic. The good news is, a study just completed at the University of Connecticut proved that once the water reaches the ground, it is chemically bound and becomes a safe substance again. Bet you were happy. You know, Deb, we don't do anything at Revere without thinking, thinking about, about how it will affect the environment. In fact, it's so important, we've included this concern in our mission statement, along with the importance of having fun. I know you don't have long, but Amy wants me to stop by the seminar she puts on for local college students. Oh, okay, what's it about? Rome's a pretty small town, so she sets it up to encourage students to consider Revere when they graduate. Huh, great. As a matter of fact, here's Brian O'Shaughnessy, our president and CEO. Hi. Hi, we were just talking about Revere and the environment. Does anyone have any questions for Brian? Yes. I've heard a lot about copper lately. It isn't so good for the environment, is it? Wasn't there something about copper killing fish in California? In mining, doesn't mining destroy the environment? Thanks. Julie. Julie, your questions are welcome. But in order to answer them, there's something you should see. <laughs> 